they can all come here. You see these four seats come down here. Here, four seats. That's it. Why I have to do this every week? We're, we're, we're grown up young uh, adults. We should know that. And there are two over here. Please, that, uh, that, th that last row, come, I would appreciate if you'd sit here. It would be very nice. Come, the, you're the only one in that row. Come here. The two of you, the one standing with the white bag. The both of you, come here in the second row. And you can even sit in the first row. Come, come down. Come here. Hello? You can sit. There are two seats right here. Fill those two seats. Thank you. Now that we've got that under control. And who, what is this young lady doing with the white? You have a seat? OK. And this young lady just coming in, come to the first row. We like to see you close. How's that? OK, very good. There's a seat there for you. Beautiful. And here's, here's another, run, 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 come on. We, we're saving a seat here in the second row. And here's my favorite lady coming down. Come, come sit up front, because you'll ask good questions. Okay? Lisette, viens, tout de suite, ici. Merci. Okay, time to start. Oop, this scares me. What happened? All right. Uh, you know, uh, get ready because May 11th is not far away. That's going to be your final exam. And next week, we have the CEO of uh, Liz Claiborne, William McComb, and Ralph Rucci after that, April 27th. And then we have a brilliant, brilliant uh, speaker like our Annette Green is today. Uh, you're very privileged to have uh, people like this come and talk to you, because you won't hear a message like they're going to give you it to enrich you for your future. I don't want anyone sitting up there. Come down. Hello? Who are you? Oh, 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 Anna, OK. <laughs> you don't have to, OK. I know. I'm sorry. I didn't have my distance glasses. You looked funny. All right. And Gloria Gelfand is a brilliant, right? She's a brilliant merchandiser a marketer, and today in this economy, you have to listen to her, Gloria Gelfand, May 4th. She'll, she'll, she'll turn uh, losers into winners, so get the message from her. But May 11th is your final exam, get ready, make notes. I hope you collect your notes. All right, that's enough about our uh, uh, people who are here. How many of you are my students? Raise your hand. Oh, yes, we have a few guests, okay. And now I'm going to take great, great pleasure to just outline, because if I were to tell you all the accolades and all the wonderful things that Annette Green has done in her area of interest, uh, it would take forever. And uh, I just want to tell you that uh, uh, she is right now authoring a book where do you go after you've been to the moon? That's the title. She has interviewed such American icons as Walter Cronkite. How many of you know Walter Cronkite? Good, good, brilliant. Beverly Sills, the opera singer. Uh, Lee Iacocca, 
and the former New York City mayor, Ed Koch. Uh, she's recognized as one of America's leading fragrance authorities and futurists. Annette Green was appointed president of the Fragrance Foundation 12 years ago and has served uh, as executive director for 33 years of a nonprofit educational organization. She was elected secretary of the board of directors on which she has served since 84. Uh, and she's the board of directors, uh, they named her President Emeritus. I've abbreviated this, but I'm going to have Annette tell you more because some of she's, uh, 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 some of the uh, uh, accolades, she's uh, the secrets of aromatic jewelry the uh, Sense of Smell Institute. You know, uh, uh, fragrance has many, many dimensions, which I'm dying to be quiet, get off this podium, and have Annette tell you about it. She's won the Fifi Awards, which is a European uh, 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 society to honor. And among that, uh, she was honored by, uh, by the city of Paris. She received the medal for her dedication and commitment to the French-American friendship by the mayor of Paris. And uh, here at our school, FIT, uh, scholarships uh, in Frank Runes Foundation, you know, you've been on the ninth floor. We have the Fa Fragrance Foundation uh, studio. And uh, I'm being a, uh, probably not very thorough. You'll straighten out everything. Please come and welcome. It's a great honor and pleasure, Annette. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, no, no, no. I'm, I'm sure I need it. Let me just get it into the right position here. That's all right. Okay. Welcome, everybody. I understand you've all been on spring break, so you're all in a very good mood. <laughs> I hope you had a good time. Uh, the Fragrance Foundation, uh, as Alice said, is a nonprofit educational arm of the fragrance industry. And when I took it over, in actually in 1961, uh, I had my own agency at the time called Annette Green Associates. It was a little tiny industry and strictly dedicated to about four or five French fragrance houses. When it's hard to believe today we were also into fragrance that American women didn't wear it. That's the bottom line. It, and it was a kind of a Saturday night thing. They put a little perfume here, maybe some here, a little black dress, string of pearls, to go out on Saturday night. And that's the only time fragrance was born. And uh, the Ameri there was no American fragrance industry at the time. And I took this, uh, I was actually asked to take it on pro bono. Uh, they didn't have any money to pay me. And uh, I always loved fragrance, and I couldn't understand why American women didn't wear fragrance. So I said, yeah, I'll do it. And it only took me 10 years to turn it around. But 42 years later, it is an internationally acclaimed industry, an internationally acclaimed organization. Women around the world obviously wear fragrance all the time and think it's important to their lives. And uh, it, it's, I really got it off the ground when I thought of the idea of the wardrobe of fragrances, which was the late 60s. And that coincided perfectly with the time when women were just starting to go to work. And that played a big role because as women thought about going to work, they realized they couldn't wear uh, sexy looking clothes to work. They, then they thought about it, didn't want to wear sexy perfume. And it gave me an opportunity to get people thinking about the many different kinds of fragrances there are and how they should wear them. I find and have found that to really be successful in business, no matter what the business, but certainly in fragrance where you can't see it, I mean, it's an invisible product, um, is to be concerned about what's going on in society. Society really does influence uh, the kinds of products that people are gonna use. And I did an exhibition up at the Museum of the City of New York a number of years ago, which I called Sense, S-C-E-N-T-S, of time. Sense of time, and what I did was try to, I started out in the uh, 1700s, and the exhibition took through, at that time, through the 70s, looking at how people changed, what they wore, what they were interested in, 
what, what made them happy, what made them unhappy, and with that, the kinds of packaging was, that was created for fragrance, the kinds of fragrances, for instance, in the 1800s, women wore lilac and lavender and had very sweet-looking <laughs> bottles. And then you get into Art Deco, it's much harder, cleaner, more uh, exciting, with fragrances that are, have no recognition. You don't know exactly what flowers or roots or herbs uh, are in those fragrances. But I, before I really go too far along, I want to put you in the mood and uh, think first of when Marilyn Monroe was asked, what does she wear to bed? Her answer, does anybody know the answer? Yes. That's it. She said Chanel number no. five, which I thought was very interesting. Well, on that theme, we did an, a, uh, a video called Sex, Sense, and Cinema, and I'm going to show it to you now. Barry? I do something you'll be very sorry for. Do you hear me? All right, you asked for it. Come on. Come on now. Get back in here. Get him. Come. Come back here. Cleopatra. Cleopatra, come back here. Maybe I can help. You certainly have a way with pigs. <sighs> Hello. Hi, honey. <laughs> oh, you're going to have a lovely place here once you get it fixed up. It has loads of possibilities. Oh, it still needs a lot of work, of course. Uh, mind if I look around? No, not at all. I'll show you around. We've only just started to get it in shape. Mm -hmm. It's going to be so nice having real people around for a change. Hey, Betty, you better get cleaned up. That isn't exactly perfume you're covered with. <laughs> Well, Hollywood has always smelled like something. First, it was oranges. Uh, can we lower the lights? Then, when the orchards turned into movie studios... No, we can't lower them. like grease paint. The movies became America's biggest consumer industry and the product they sold was glamour. Was missing something in a bottle. Why do those talented Parisian gents rack their brains concocting fragrance Ha ha, indeed. Movie stars were selling everything from lipstick to mascara, but suddenly they knew it wasn't enough just to look good, they had to smell good, too. I'm Rex Reed at the Annette Green Museum at the Fragrance Foundation, the only fragrance museum in America. As far back as 1914, ladies like Louise Brooks, Gloria Swanson, and Greta Garbo already knew about the value of fragrances before they could even talk about it. You smell so good. What's the name of that cologne, dear? Why, it's meant for you alone, dear. I want to disconnect the phone, dear. You smell so good that when I get a whiff of thee, 
I declare a state of emergency. How I love that aphrodisia makes me wanna hug and squeeze ya or do anything to please ya. You smell so good, like a garden full of roses, and to think this treat for noses is free. Yes, I'm thinking of changing my perfume. Would you like something more subtle or something more in the woodsy order? This, for instance. <laughs> After sound came in, they talked about it all the time. Oh, I wouldn't think that one suggested your personality at all. It's called, uh, um. Look, why don't you wait in the bedroom and shut the door? All right. I just dropped in for a minute anyway. I didn't know you were touching up your hair. Oh, darling, don't use this perfume. You smell it on everyone. Now, show the doctor in. Somebody in this car smells a Chanel number no. five. It didn't me. I can't afford it. Well, you sure weren't right in the range this afternoon, were you? I sure wasn't. No. <laughs> Screwiest way of getting yourself waked up I ever saw. By a fancy smell. Mm -hmm. Your hair's still wet from spoon back here. You know that? Mm-hmm. It smells wonderful. Why do they still make perfumes like bouquet de fleurs if things still happen in flower gardens? Now, if they turned out something like uh, wet hair after swimming, you'd have something. Who wants perfume? Give me the fresh, wet smell of Iowa corn right after it rains. Of course, such a perfume should never be applied directly. It should ever nest. So, it is a... Uh... $67 an ounce. How many ounces? Isn't that rather expensive? How else could we keep the wrong sort of person from wearing it? <laughs> what is that odor? Gee, I just don't smell like that. Hey, that's nice perfume. Something new that attracts mosquitoes and repels men. Hello? Was I the only one listening? I mean, I thought it reeked. I believe that was your designer imposter perfume. Perfume was power. Some people would do anything to get it. I stole this. I never stole anything before in my life. I don't need perfume. Nobody needs perfume. Betty Davis couldn't make a movie without it. Shall I tell you what you've given me? On that very first day, a little bottle of perfume made me feel important. You were my first friend. And then when you fell in love with me, I was so proud. You know something I always remembered about you? What? Your perfume. What was it? Desire me. Most expensive perfume in the world. A girl could get ahead without a sled. She could get a man without a tan but found only gloom and doom without perfume. To women of all ages, finding the right scent was everything. I wish my husband were here. He's so fussy about the way I smell. Why don't you let me help you, lady? After all, I'd have the man's point of view. Yes, see which one you like. Not bad. Oh, this is it. Louis d'Amour. Night of love. No contest, lady. Really? You wear that and the Frenchman will never let you go back to Milwaukee. Oh, <laughs> I, oh it is good, isn't good? <laughs> You'll need protection. <laughs> oh, I hope so. Finding the wrong one was disaster. <laughs> lady 
ladies of literature learned the value of perfume fast from Cleo. I will meet with Lord Anthony, but only on Egyptian soil. To Frankie Adams. Everything's been so sudden today. I never believed before about the fact that the earth turns at about the rate of a thousand miles a day. But now it seems to me I feel the world going around very fast. I feel it turning and it makes me dizzy. Turn the other way. To Blanche Dubois. I'm ready to answer all questions. I have nothing to hide. What is it? In the state of Louisiana, we got here what's known as the Napoleonic Code. According to which, that what belongs to the wife belongs to the husband also, and vice versa. Ma, oh, but you have an impressive judicial air. You know, if I didn't know that you was my wife's sister, I would get ideas about you. Scarlett O'Hara even used it in a brand new way. Perfume was a staple for tough girls. The perfume on your hair. What's the name of it? I don't know. I bought it in Ensenada. Mmm, nice. Did you get this in New York? No, a drugstore in Kansas City. I'm real glad you came back home, May. Home is where you come when you run out of places. Rough girls. What kind of perfume are you using? Temptation. Yes, I suppose it is in some quarters. You and your sensitive nose. Since when did Joe Cavani know anything about perfume? Cheap perfume is cheap perfume, no matter who tells you. And nice girls, too. I have something for you. Probably wrong kinds. Perfume, but it's all the PX had. You can give them away to someone else. Not me. Evelyn, if I remember right, this is spring fancy. Very appropriate. Thank you. And Barbara, something called heaven sent. S-C-E-N-T. Oh, thank you. <laughs> this is called, believe it or not, Messy Bien, or as we say in Oklahoma, thanks a lot. My mother always taught my sisters it was all right to accept the following gifts from a man. Candy, flowers, and perfume. <laughs> Movie stars would die for the right fragrance. In Leave Her to Heaven, Jean Tyranny wouldn't die without it. Perfume was a clue in murder mysteries. It's a little difficult to accept your condolences, Poirot. All four of the murdered people had this lotion on them when the devil bat struck. It's a little strong. That'll make the customers think they're getting their money's worth. In the uninvited, it was even worn by a ghost. The mimosa scent. It's flooding the room. She's happy now. The scent's gone. As a premonition of future history and kisses for my president, Harleen Dahl even brought it to the White House. Darling, that's no way to test a fragrance. You have to put it on the pulse spots. Give me your wrist. There, try it. I want my smoke. Here, smell my earlobe. Yeah, it uh, smells good. Yeah. Smell in the hollow of my neck. Yeah, that, that, that's the best yet. Oh, darling. Eventually, the guys got into the act, too. The perfume and cosmetics department is now our outstanding feature. It accounts for 34% of our gross intake and an even higher proportion of our profits. As you will readily surmise, our customers in this department are almost exclusively women. Yes, I'd surmise that. After I remove the ice pack, I use a deep pore cleanser lotion. In the shower, I use a water-activated gel cleanser, then a honey almond body scrub, and on the face, an exfoliating gel scrub. Then I apply an herb mint facial mask. I always use an aftershave lotion with little or no alcohol, then moisturizer, then an anti-aging eye balm, followed by a final moisturizing protective lotion. I can't seem to find my toothbrush, so I'll pick one up when I go out today. Other than that, I'm in good shape.
have a good time, girls? Oh, Josephine, the most wonderful thing happened. Tell me all about him. Well, he's young and he's handsome. Mm. Yes? Oh, Doctor. Un smellez-vous fine. Fantasies and film romances have always been enhanced by the spells cast by fragrances. On screen and off, it seems perfume is here to stay. So let's face it, rub it, spray it, squirt it, or take it to the bathtub. Perfume has changed the movies, and movies have changed perfume. It all makes sense to me. Wow. Where is Maine anyway? could you not? They're gorgeous. All those wonderful actresses. At any rate, when I wanted to make this film for, the, for my museum, uh, I was introduced to Rex Reed by some friends of mine who knew him very well and asked how I should go about it. And he said, well, you know, in the basement of my house, I have all the old movies. I will go over them all, listen, look at them all, and pick out every scene that has perfume in it. So that was like a once in a lifetime opportunity. And of course I took it and I think he did just wonderfully. It was a, you know, thank you, thank you. So as I said before, you know, why does anybody really want to wear perfume uh, when it doesn't make you younger, richer, or thinner? And the, the reality is that Jan, you can't, I mean, you can't see it it's, 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 it's the invisible product. But, what, but the truth of the matter is it does make you feel better. It makes you feel sexier, happier, uh, more confident, whatever it might be. And people in the industry used to say that in all their advertising. And I got thinking about it one day. And I thought, you know, uh, for an industry that is totally dedicated to the sense of smell, it, it knows nothing about the sense of smell. So I began to think that, uh, that we better do some research and see what the sense is all about. Uh, Helen Keller, the very famous blind woman, uh, said that the sense of smell was the fallen angel of the senses. 
most people if you, that you asked yourself or your friends, which sense could you live without of their five senses, most people would say the sense of smell, not realizing that the sense of smell really does have a tremendous impact on your life. For instance, you never could have a relationship with someone whose smell you didn't like. That would be absolutely impossible. Uh, smells can protect you from, from danger. Uh, when you meet a person, even though you don't realize it, not only are you seeing them, but you're also smelling them. And that's why the Eskimos rub noses when they meet, because they want to smell the person. And Helen Keller, I'm a great fan of hers because of her, you know, the unbelievable life she had despite all her troubles. Um, she could go into a neighborhood and tell you the kind of people who lived there by the smell in the neighborhood. That, that permeated it. And uh, so we started, I got the board of directors of the foundation in the early 80s to start an organization which eventually was called the Sense of Smell Institute. And because uh, I noticed in newspapers and magazines like the New Yorker and the New York Times that there were do articles about doctors, sensory, what they called sensory psychologists, who were studying the role of odor on behavior. And I noticed somebody up at Yale and somebody at Georgetown, and I called them up. And I said, what are you, what are you doing? I, I don't know what this is all about. They said, well, come see us. And so I did, and that led to everything we're experiencing today with aromatherapy, aromacology, which I named as, as a, uh, a way to use fragrance. And we have found through studies in colleges, hospitals, including up here at Memorial Sloan Kettery, that fragrance can have a tremendous impact on the way you, way you feel. The doctors came to see me from Memorial Sloan Kettering, and they said they were having a lot of trouble keeping people in the MRI machine. And anyone who's ever seen an MRI machine or experienced it knows that you're put into this long cube, round cube, and it's a clanging sound, and it's cl this close to your face, and it's very intimidating. And people have a chance to push a button to get out if they can't take it. And they tried very hard many things to get the people more relaxed, and they just couldn't because the clagging eliminated music. So we, they asked me, could, would I work with them in developing a, a scent that they could put uh, under the, we actually created a Rube Goldberg kind of contraption which ended up with two tubes under the person's nose in the, in the cylinder. And we created a vanilla type fragrance. And they had like a 67% reduction in stress and people, um, insisting that they come out. Does anybody, can anybody imagine why a vanilla type fragrance would be important and might be helpful to, to a person? Well, it's a, it's a fragrance of home. It's a fragrance of mother's cooking. It's, a, it's, it's the kitchen. It's, it's a very soothing kind of fragrance. And very shortly after that, t that came out, uh, that information, Cody brought out Vanilla Fields and it was the, one of the most successful fragrances that they ever had, which was the industry taking advantage of, uh, of what was going on. So just to talk a moment about my own career, and you're looking at a person who insists that you do what your heart tells you to do. Follow your heart, and you'll never be unhappy in your work, because that's what you do a lot of. And don't think about money, and don't think about vacations, and don't think about any of that. Think about using your talents, using all the abilities that you have uh, in, a, in a career that is going to bring you a lot of happiness. And believe me, eventually it does bring you money, although it might not in the beginning. At any rate, when I took, as I say, I took the Fragrance Foundation into my business, which was a public relations marketing business called Annette Green Associates. And I had a lot of clients. I had Givenchy Sportswear and Max Factor and c and Ski. And, uh, and, and many, fortunately, many other accounts that I could afford to take the foundation. And uh, as, as I ca it came, and that's the other thing, you have to be very aware of what's going on in the world and take advantage of it. The reason I was able to move the foundation from nothing to uh, something was that all the pharmaceutical houses in the 60s were buying the French houses, the French perfume houses, and they knew nothing about fragrance. They didn't know who, what companies were on the market. They didn't know what products they had. They didn't know where they were sold. So I realized that. I mean, I wasn't, 
I didn't know what the end result was going to be, but I did start to produce information for those companies so that they would have this at their fingertips. And slowly but surely, I insisted that the foundation create a board and start to develop memberships. And uh, today, it's worldwide. Um, when we got into the 70s, what ha well, 60s, I say, was when uh, women went to work. At the early 70s, Revlon brought out Charlie. And that was a really landmark moment, because the first time women wore pants, they, in fact, it's funny thing was, he would not allow any woman to wear pants in the company, but he had the advertiser, the girl striding across the page wearing pants. And Charlie was, a, you know, was just a tremendous success. And then in the 70s, you had all the designers jump into the industry. You know, Oscar and Ralph, uh, all of those people began to have fragrances. And it was taking advantage of the fact that the American woman, who was becoming so fashion conscious, couldn't afford the clothes, but they could afford the perfume. And that made it extremely uh, lucrative for the designers. In fact, most of the designers will admit that uh, they made more money with the fragrances and cosmetics than they did with their clothes. And it helped them really build their businesses very much so. But all of this time, I mean, I had to keep coming up with ideas. I mean, ideas is what it's all about when you're dealing particularly with an invisible product, but really any product. You've got to capture the consumer's imagination. And one of the ideas I had was to create what I called a fragrance costume promenade. And it was going to take place at the Waldorf. We had a wonderful uh, edit editor at the time, a fashion editor, called Eugenia Shepard. There is a Eugenia Shepard Award uh, with, a, with your fashion, uh, C CFDA. And, uh, the, the judges sat in the middle of the, of the, of the uh, ballroom floor, and the idea was that each company who wished to participate should create a costume that represented the fragrance. And the most extraordinary things happened. Uh, one of them was that uh, there's a company called International Flavors and Fragrances, and they are people who make the fragrances. And they sent this beautiful girl out on the stage, and she looked like she was wearing a sheath. But when she pulled certain invisible strings, it opened up into an antebellum gown covered with fresh flowers. I mean, it was spectacular. And at the time, Henry Bendel was on 57th Street. And they had a beauty and fragrance shop within the store called the Birdcage. And they created a, like a 10-foot golden birdcage. And swinging on the swing in the birdcage was a beautiful girl dressed in all in feathers. And it was really magnificent. But it's interesting from a fashion and fragrance point of view. At that time, Oscar Little Renta was working for Elizabeth Arden. He was her designer. And, he, and they entered this, uh, this competition. And there was an extraordinary model called Verushka. Verushka, people you still may know of her. She is, is still with us happily. But she was about almost seven feet tall. She was unbelievable and very, very beautiful. And he put a nude bodysuit on her and wrapped her in cellophane in a very creative, beautiful way. And he, way before the aerosol, he created a, a wand which, when she pressed the bottom, fragrance came out of it. And he won. And he always said, Annette, you made me, because Elizabeth Arden started to pay attention. How come you're winning? And he won two years in a row with another different costume. And that was a very uh, exciting uh, project. And it got a lot of press. But the reason I didn't continue it was that people spent so much money creating the costumes. And if they didn't win, they got really angry. So I thought, I think I better think of something else if I want to survive this. So the, what I thought of was the Fifi Awards, which are based on the Academy Awards. And uh, this year is the 35th anniversary. And uh, 35 years ago, I sat in a little uh, cafe in Paris on the left bank thinking about all this. And I just etched the whole thing out of how it would work. I was thinking about the Emmys and the Tonys and, uh, and the Oscars. And when I came back, I had a friend with the Tonys. And I said, could I bring this thing over and show you? Am I on the right track? And he gave me a few pointers. And he said, yeah, I think, you, I think it'll work. Well, again, it was 10 years before it really took off. But most of my career has been in 10-year blocks. So I could make these things happen. But in 72 was the first 
Fifi Awards at the Plaza, and pushing and shoving, we got 250 people at $50 a ticket. We now got well, well over 1,000 with tickets that run something like $35,000, $45,000 for a table, uh, et cetera. And then I thought, well, this really should be international. And so I took, I went to France, I went to Germany, I went to Italy, Spain, and uh, the UK, of course. And I, everybody was quite interested in it, and exactly how they didn't have the operation that I had the, to make it come off, so they had to create committees, volunteers, etc. But the French were the most resistant, because you can imagine they did not want an American woman to come over and tell them to have an award for the best fragrances of the year. Well, it was very unpleasant, I can assure you, but I'm a very tenacious person, and once I make up my mind I'm going to do something, it usually gets done, and that's, that I can, I can share with you, uh, if I believe in it very strongly. So they now have had it for, I guess it's about 25, 26 years. As a matter of fact, I'm going over for it uh, in Paris uh, in May. Uh, and and it, they do it beautifully. They did it in the beginning. They just sort of tossed it off, and it was ugly and not stylish at all. But today they, they tied it with Marie Claire, who brings a lot of the creativity to the table, and, and, and it is quite, uh, it's quite impressive. And we always had fragrance weeks in New York. We tied in with all the retailers. We gave them a theme. And then I created something called Fragrance Fun Day, which was in a tent up at Lincoln Center, because we used to do uh, the Fifi's at Lincoln Center. And the Fragrance Fun Day was under the big tent there in, in Damrosh Park. And, uh, we had just wonderful things going on. People came, we sent buses around the city, stopping at every department store, picking people up, and brought them up to Lincoln Center. And people came in the morning and never left. <laughs> we had, a, we had, you could have your own perfume made. There was a, one of the companies did that. They, another company did a, a, a rainforest, showing the kind of ingredients we get from rain, the rainforest. We had a staging area where we had celebrities all day long, beauty editors as well as personalities in the field who were, came on, talked about fragrance and their, what they, how they felt about it, et cetera. And uh, it, was, it was a great success, and it was only done once, but, we, but it was wonderful. The Fifi is uh, a special baby of mine. I feel very, very strongly about it. And, um, I felt to myself when I was sitting in that little, uh, little place in, on, on the left bank in Paris that this industry was one of the most creative industries in the world. When you think about the bottle, when you think about the artistry of creating an exquisite fragrance, I mean, this is not making tires. I mean, this is an industry like fashion that deserves to be recognized. And uh, it, as I say, it, it took a while to do, but one of the many events we had, and we did a lot at Lincoln Center, we did some at the Waldorf and other places, but the one that I especially want to call your attention to was that I decided to do it at Radio City. And I, was, I always wrote it, produced it, directed it, and conceived the setting, the stage set. And I had a wonderful fellow who was my, my designer, and he actually started out with the fashion group many years ago. And he, was, he is quite, incredibly uh, creative. And um, we did a set, and that's a very big stage, I can tell you. This, this is like nothing. You just you feel like you're in a whole country when you're on the stage of, Ra of Radio City. And we had the Rockettes, and we had a wonderful uh, performer, maybe some of you used to remember, he died unfortunately a few years ago, Jeffrey, uh, Gregory Hines, you know, who was just heaven. To work with him, we were co-hosts of the evening, and he was just a darling guy. And uh, so the Rockettes, they, had, they did their routine, several dances and routines. We allowed the public to come, by the way, to that, because we had this great big place to fill. And they had a dance number with canes, and they made, the way you sometimes see at West Point, they made arches of canes going all the way down. And I had, when well, my entrance was to go through the canes, well, my heart <laughs> was really beating, and I'm not the least bit stage, I, I don't ever have stage fright, but I did on the stage of the Rockefeller Center. And, uh, it, it, but it, it all came off, and everybody had a wonderful time. I was also honored here at uh, FIT, uh, 
they have this dinner every year, which is called One Person Makes a Difference. And I had started here the um, cosmetic marketing curriculum. In the uh, early 80s, I came to see Shirley Goodman. That's the name of the building across the street, and a wonderful woman she was. And I said, Shirley, you know, you really should have a curriculum on cosmetics and fragrances because they're connected. I mean, they're not ice, they're not two separate industries. So she said, well, I don't know really what you're saying, but if you want to do it, teach it. So I said, okay. So I came in every Thursday afternoon, and it was, it was you know, not required. Kids came, you guys came, and uh, they, they loved it. And what I did was I created teams. Each team took a city, each team took a fragrance, a charity, and uh, they created a promotion around that fragrance or that cosmetic. It wasn't only fragrances. And then we presented it to the industry in one of the auditoriums you have in the other building, and they voted on, on, on the best presentation. And I don't know, the word got out and people really got very excited about it. And uh, all of a sudden we had a bachelor's program. I say all of a sudden, it's another 10 years. But today we also have a master's program, as I'm sure many of you know. So because of that, uh, FIT decided to honor me. And it was just when the film Scent of a Woman was popular. And the powers that be decided that I should do the tango on stage at the Waldorf. And I could tell you that was the second time that I was very, very nervous. So they, went, they sent me off to take lessons, which I did. And the dancer, the dance instructor, was actually my partner. So I threw myself at his arms for whatever it was worth. And uh, people were, I was, as I say, extremely nervous. The only thing that made me forget it was everybody started to stamp their feet. And somehow or other, hearing that everybody like was with me, I just did the tango. And people said, oh, I had no idea you were such a good tango dancer. So it was a, it was a wonderful uh, occasion, I have to say. And I got a beautiful award for it, which sits in a very important place in my home. But the interesting thing that I also dedicated myself to when we created the Sense of Smell uh, Institute uh, was to really uh, work with college students to give people the opportunity to, to find another area of expertise. And uh, you know, you could be a perfumer, you could be a sensory psychologist, you could be a marketer, you could be a packager, you could be in the art department, you could be in promotion, and you could be at retail. And uh, there are really great, great opportunities for women in the cosmetic industry. And I, I really, uh, I, don't know, I guess most of you are thinking of fashion, but think about cosmetics and fragrances too, because as I say, there are great opportunities that I would uh, uh, love you to take advantage of. Uh, how, how many have seen my perfume lab in, in FI, at FIT? Are any of you in Virginia? No, Did you move it? I know you are, yeah. No. But it's still where it always was. Oh, okay. That's good. It's still there. So if you go up to the ninth floor in the B building, you have to be in that green The green perfume. It's actually the Annette Green Perfume Studio. No, that's okay. And they, what they do there is learn how to, uh, to blend fragrances and understand the ingredients. Uh, it is an industry that's very intuitive. You know, it, it, you bring your imagination to it, and, and uh, that's part of the fun of it. That it's what you bring plus what's, what's going to be the end result. And there's not too many things that, uh, that you could do that with. Uh, I'd love to answer, I'd love to, yeah. I better answer some questions. I hope you have some questions. Oh yeah, I will show. I do have a film to show. Yeah, I did. I did the last. If no questions. Yes. Oh no. Good. There's what's going on? That's the Fifi. The Fifi Awards. Yes. Oh, <laughs> one of my friends is also getting the Medal of Honor from the city, which I will be attending that as well. Yes? What's your favorite 
Oh, I never tell. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, not, I'm not allowed to do that. There's another question over here someplace. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Well, I think, I think it's good and bad. I think there are too many. But on the other hand, I think that celebrity fragrances, when they came along, reflected, well, again, what's going on in society. This is a celebrity crazy society. And I think the celebrity fragrance concepts saved the fragrance industry, which at the time was sort of, you know, like that. However, I think it's time to begin to look at other worlds. And as a matter of fact, I've just interviewed by Women's Wear Daily, and I've given them a, some ideas of where I think the industry should be going. So I think it's now it's right, although overdone, like most things in life when things are good, like eating too much ice cream. Uh, but uh, it will go on to other things. And it has a big market with young people, particularly. Did everybody here wear perfume? Yes. <laughs> I hope. Yes. No. But you're, but you're right, you know, the French do call their dogs Fifi, and because of that, they have now, they don't call the award Fifi anymore. They just, I don't know, they, they call it perfume awards or something, you know. They just it sort of rub them the wrong way. The Germans are the same. They also call dogs Fifi. But since we're talking about the Fifi, I, I have a wonderful wrap-up of the Fifi evenings that I wanted to share with you. And Barry, I think we're on again. I hope you enjoy it. Yes. I should say that I wrote the, the lyrics to Thanks for the Memory, and Andrea Marcovici, who is a wonderful singer, many, many of you know her, she sang it for me as a favor. Full of passion, 
sure hope so. Read about it in beauty fashion. No tears, no fuss. Hooray for us. So thanks for the memory. And strictly entre nous, we're proud of knowing you. And hope that all your fifi dreams really do come true. Awfully glad to see you, cheerio and toodaloo. And thank you so What you should know is that the starting point, when people want to create a perfume, they create something called a perfume profile, the company or the person. So that perfume profile tells you who is the customer. Is it a man? Is it a woman? Is she young? Is she older? Is, it, uh, is she a career person? Do you want to have for her evening wear, sexy, uh, more for sportive use, whatever. So all of these things have to go into a perfume profile. And then you give that perfume profile to a couple of companies like uh, International Flavors and Fragrances, a company called Givadon, a company called Furbinish. They are the people who make the fragrances. People who don't know the industry think that, let's say, an Estee Lauder makes her own fragrances or L'Oreal. They go to these companies. Very often they have labs within the companies who can work with the perfumers. But these, they have the best perfumers, and they're, everything's global today. But you know, I'm thinking of, of a fragrance that just would start out in the United States. Then they, sub, they give you submissions of fragrances based on the profile, which the perfumer creates from his or her own imagination, obviously. And then usually the company tests it and see which, which of the fragrances test best. While that's going on, the fragrance has been named, even though it hasn't been created yet, 
and packaging has started, and the marketing concepts around it have started, because that's extremely important. And even uh, the sales people go, the sales staff, start to talk to the retailers if it's going to go through retail uh, or QVC or whatever, uh, as to whether or not they'd be willing to take it to introduce it. Usually a fragrance is introduced exclusively in a store for X amount of time. But it costs a lot of money. And usually the stores, I don't think anybody's ever made money at Bloomingdale's. At Bloomingdale's, when you launch a fragrance there, they want you to pay, I mean, they, the, the fragrance people pay for everything. Every flower on the counter, the girl behind the counter, the signs, the decorations, the, if it's the windows, whatever, sometimes carpeting. If a company's introducing a new perfume and it's purple, they want to have a purple carpet, the store is fine with the store as long as you pay for it. And the advertising, so that it, the manufacturer is in a very tight spot and it does cost, as I say, a lot of money. But it also brings in a lot of money. So uh, you could do it in a very tidy way. Does everybody here know Bond? I mean, Bond is a perfect example of an entrepreneur. She's a fabulous woman. And uh, she took, you know, this one bottle and she's redecorated it over and over again, depending upon what the theme is. Right now, she's got a, a Brooklyn. Has anybody seen Brooklyn yet? It's wonderful. It's got all kinds of graffiti. It's, it's a fabulous bottle. Just before that, she did uh, Andy Warhol. And of course, she has Gramercy Park, where I live, and where. And then she has something called uh, uh, Peace. And she, they're all over the city. Her theme is to take different parts of the city and create fragrances. And they've been extremely successful. And she has, she's got three, and she has grown so because she has sold the fragrance so uh, successfully that she has the, the little, the boutique down on Bond Street. And then she has one, okay, two on Madison Avenue. But she also got into Saks Fifth Avenue and she made a Saks Fifth Avenue fragrance with that wonderful new black and white uh, theme that they have for their shopping bags, et cetera. And it's like the third or fourth best-selling fragrance in the department. So it can be done in a small way. It really depends on how much money, what, you're, what you really want to accomplish. But the big companies today are looking at everything globally. And I think, you, ha you know, you really have to, she, she's selling globally now. She sells in, in the Arab countries. She's got people abroad who represent her. So, I mean, it's a very big world today and, it's, and small at the same time in relation to products. Any other question? Yes. Well, you, first you take the course here. You, you know, you take the, uh, the bachelor's course and learn what the industry is all about. And this is the best, I mean, that's my whole was my idea. I want it to be a profession. And I came here that it's just because I love fragrance. I mean, it, it's a business like everything else. And it's a wonderful uh, curriculum, really. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to say hello to my friends up here.